Greetings, everyone, and a warm welcome to Addis News Hour with the news. I'm Shifar Aulako. The House of Federation has approved a resolution allowing federal and regional state councils to continue functioning as long as the coronavirus remains a national threat. The House also endorsed the proposal table to conduct the sixth general elections within nine months to one year after the pandemic is declared by health and other concerned bodies that it will no longer pose a threat to public health. The House approved the resolution by majority votes in favor, four against and one abstention. In another development, the House has approved the postponement of the fourth national housing and population census due to COVID-19. The House also elected Adam Farah as its speaker, replacing Keria Ibrahim, who resigned from her position. Quote, Ethiopia does not have a history of causing harm to others, nor are we interested now in harming others. Our need is only one to develop and prosper and to remove our people from the grips of poverty, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has tweeted. The Premier also says, quote, more than 50 million Ethiopians do not have access to clean water. That is almost the population of one country. More than 50 million do not have access to electricity. To this day, Ethiopian mothers still carry firewood. Meeting their basic rights and needs is of paramount importance. Development of GERD is, therefore, for our growth as it is equally to the benefit of lower riparian countries. Seeing this project in a positive light is, therefore, critical. Moving on, Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt's ministers of water affairs have been participating in a virtual meeting aiming at setting the agenda for further tripartite talks regarding the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. The meeting was held in the presence of observers from South Africa, the European Union, and the United States. It discussed issues related to procedures, role of observers, measures required to continue negotiation and unresolved outstanding issues. Each country forwarded its own agenda for negotiation at the meeting conducted via the video conferencing technology. At the end, the three countries reached a consensus to hold a series of meetings over the coming days. Sudan's Minister of Irrigation and Water Resources, Professor Yasir Abbas Mohamed, said the meeting took place in a positive spirit and the discussion was fruitful. We have discussed two agendas. The first is how to pursue urgently negotiations. The next is the determination of main outstanding issues for each country separately. All points have been seen positively. It was agreed to hold daily meetings except on Friday and Sunday to reach an agreement on the pending points. Also, it was agreed that the negotiation between the three capitalists will be conducted through video conferencing technology and to assess the outcome of the daily meetings on next Monday or Tuesday. On behalf of Sudan, the issues we have not agreed on are very few. Meanwhile, Sudan has reiterated that tripartite talks should resume on the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Talking to the Sudanese National TV, Sudanese Minister for Foreign Affairs Asma Mohamed and Minister for Water and Irrigation Yasser Abba said the building of the dam does not violate the universal principle of fair and equitable utilization of the Nile water. The two ministers indicated that peaceful and win-win solutions must be sought regarding the proceeding and completion of the dam. Ethiopia can generate electricity and Sudan can operate its dams smoothly and benefit from the organized flow of the water, according to the foreign minister. The minister added that the Renaissance Dam can be an initiative of regional cooperation in which all parties can benefit. In another story, experts told Al Jazeera Arabic that Ethiopia is building its dam on the Nile based on a water policy that does not harm any downstream country. Egypt, on the other hand, has no such a strategy, they said. Hence, Ethiopia's interests must be supported and maintained since the country is building the dam for domestic energy demand. Ethiopia even has the ownership and right to do so, they added.
اعتقد ان اثيوبيا من البدايه اتبعت استراتيجيه الامر الواقع ان تستمر في مشروعها كمشروع استراتيجي To be honest, this Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam shows two leaders of divergent views. Ethiopia wants to extricate its people from poverty by building the dam. On the contrary, Egypt is building prisoners and jailing its people who are seeking democracy and change. So Egypt is very much trying to instigate its people to think about Ethiopia and the GERD project and ignore the political crisis they are facing at home. This is a clearly visible plot of the Egyptian government on its own people. This is what I see. Some say Egypt might conduct a military strike on Ethiopia. This is never possible. It's a mere illusion. Now, in other news, experts say Ethiopia has gone far beyond the limit as far as cooperation, negotiation, and goodwill on the GERD is concerned. As one of the huge infrastructure on a transboundary river, the dam can be a source of cooperation not only to Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt, but also to the entire region. They have indicated Sintayo Tamrat presents Anna's file. Egyptian leaders have never wanted any of the upstream countries to undertake development projects on the Nile. It is the ambition to sustain such maleficent greed that Egypt has been witnessing during all the negotiation over Ethiopia's mega dam. An independent researcher, Magdalaid Messai, said, Egypt and Sudan that request for prior notification or agreement did not do so when they developed same infrastructures. She contends that Ethiopia has gone above and beyond what's required as far as cooperation, negotiation and goodwill go. This goodwill and concessions and uh, going above and beyond what's expected from us legally and according to international laws was all in hopes of favoring transboundary cooperation, but that's, that does not seem to be the case. So. Again, in the coming discussions, in the coming tripartite discussions, I think Ethiopia should take note from previous agreements, previous discussions, and really hold our own. According to Magdalite, Egypt's quite low water use efficiency demonstrates no coincidence of the continuum of water scarcity narrative. There has to be a red line where Ethiopia should say no, she added. So, all these negotiations and discussions on the dam feeling and the dam operation, they are not happening out of responsibility of Ethiopia to engage these countries, but out of goodwill and cooperation. Because there is no, there's no legal uh, framework that, uh, that binds Ethiopia to be a part of these discussions. Ethiopia has so far provided all the necessary documents of GERD out of the desire for cooperation, it was said. It has notified, not only that Ethiopia has notified them, it has also shared a number of important documents, hundreds of documents, starting from the design of the, the GERD. And this shows it, Ethiopia's interest and willingness to cooperate. And this has been our policy, despite changes in regimes. Speaking about the water share of the Nile River, Samuel explained that it would be colonial agreement once again, unless the Nile Basin countries entertain their respective interests. Recalling Egypt and Sudan's refusal to sign the cooperative framework agreement, he noted that it shows that they have other interests and agenda beyond developing the Nile River cooperatively within the Basin countries. We need to take into account, we should not be discussing on who gets what, which amount of water. That's very colonial. We should not be doing the same mistake that Egypt has been doing and we've been against it. If we need a sustainable peace, a sustainable economic development in the region, each and every country has to make sure that its interests and aspirations for development is enshrined within this framework. Ethiopia, Egypt and Sudan have resumed initial talks to continue their negotiation. Now, Arab-born Ethiopian citizen Mohammed Al-Rusi calls upon Ethiopians to remain united for realizing the GERD irrespective of differences. Mohammed is well known for facing of Egyptian politicians concerning the construction of the dam in international arenas. Adula Taklamarim has more on that. Muhammad al Arusi was born and raised in Saudi Arabia. This Ethiopian flag waver has long been fighting for the interests of Ethiopia, 
in the Eno National Arena. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam project is very essential to Muhammad, like other Ethiopians. Egypt's irrational approach toward Ethiopian flagship project forced Muhammad to contribute his role in different international media outlets. He is determined to correct Egypt's misinforming the Arab world regarding the dam. Patriotism and a strong sense of nationalism initiated me to voice Ethiopia's interest in the international arena. Plus to this, Ethiopia has the right to utilize its own natural resources. Egypt's interference in Ethiopia's local affairs is very visible. The country has been using local political splinters to impediment the construction of the good. So, we need to promote Ethiopia's national interest to the rest of the world. Mohammed said, Egyptians have never devoted in such national projectors irrespective of their political and ideological differences. Most all Egyptians have common agenda concerning the Nile River and development programs. They are the same in disseminating fake news about the good, especially to the Arab world. But we Ethiopians have an objective realism that we have every right to use our own natural resources without harming any downstream countries. This is what we should share, with no difference. Mohammed further calls on all Ethiopian media organizations to play share in promoting Ethiopia's national interest to the world. Ethiopian media organizations need to harness policies and strategies on how to arrest the international community toward the close al dam. There should be strong media environment where said information is flown about the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam project. We need to invest more in the media than ever before. Besides this, all Ethiopians need to stand together for the realization of the dam. Ethiopia yesterday reported 170 new cases of the coronavirus pandemic, bringing the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 2,506. All the confirmed cases are Ethiopians, with 81 of them from Addis Ababa and the remaining from the regional states. Three more patients also died of the virus, with the total number of fatalities now reaching 35. 22 people have also recovered from the virus, raising the total number of recoveries to 401. France says strong cooperation is critical in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. The outbreak is the common enemy of humanity across the globe. Talking to ETV, the French ambassador to Ethiopia says concrete action is also needed to eradicate the negative impacts of the pandemic by solidifying collaboration, Abdama Shabri reports. Sources indicate that currently the number of infected people by COVID-19 has reached over 7.2 million globally, and over 411,000 people have passed away due to the pandemic. Some 3.6 million people have also recovered from the pandemic across the world. In an exclusive interview with ETV, French Ambassador to Ethiopia Frederick Botem says cooperation is a key instrument to control the spread of the virus. He added France is always ready to support Ethiopia's effort in the fight against the pandemic. COVID-19 is really a global issue. You have more than 200 countries worldwide that have been affected by this pandemic. And we are in this together. Together we stand against the COVID. And so it's very important for us at the French Embassy to engage in concrete actions with the local communities here in Addis Ababa to help managing this fight against the COVID-19. According to the ambassador, the government of France has been taking similar measures like Ethiopia to fight COVID-19 pandemic as well as its impact. He also advises Ethiopians to take proper measures adopted by the World Health Organizations and health experts to contain the spread of the pandemic. Frederick has applauded the role of Ethiopian government is playing to curb the outbreak of the coronavirus. Basically, we have taken the same kind of measures as the Ethiopian government. So uh, a lockdown, we have closed the school and uh, we have, uh, well, actually closed a lot of economic activities too. And of course, it's uh, something difficult 
uh, you have very harsh decisions to take because the impact on the life of people and on the economy are very, very strong. But we had to do so. Uh, according to a very recent survey, the different measures that have been taken in Europe have saved the life of more than six million people. So it's very important. It was very important in Europe. It's still very important because the fight is not over. And it's very important here in Ethiopia to continue to uh, adopt the right measures in this fight against COVID-19. Mostly, you, you know what it is, to uh, avoid this gathering of people, to wash your hands regularly, to use hand sanitizer, to maintain the social distancing, uh, to wear a mask when out of your home. These are the most important things that we can do right now. He also says France is desirous to boost its cooperation with Ethiopia in other fields. We are in this together and we will uh, win this fight against our common enemy, the virus, together. And uh, for example, we have, uh, we are working very hard uh, to uh, release the economic pressure. Information obtained from the Ministry of Health shows over 2,500 Ethiopians have contracted the coronavirus pandemic with 401 recovery, 35 coronavirus-related deaths. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia has appointed its seasoned diplomat, Ambassador Dina Mufti, as its new spokesperson. Prior to his appointment, Dina had been Ethiopia's ambassador to Egypt. He also served as Ethiopia's resident ambassador in Kenya, Sweden, and Zimbabwe, and as a non-resident ambassador in many other African and European countries, among, of course, other positions he assumed. The African Development Bank has approved a $1.2 million grant to Ethiopia to finance a feasibility study for the construction of a standard gauge railway link between Ethiopia and Sudan. It will link Addis Ababa to Khartoum with an extension to Port Sudan on the Red Sea, according to Logistics Update Africa. The route, agreed by both governments, stretches 1,522 kilometers between Addis Ababa and Port Sudan. The grant would cover 35% of the total estimated $3.4 million cost of the study. The remaining funding will be provided by the NEPAD Infrastructure Project Preparation Facility in the form of a $2 million grant and by a contribution of $100,000 each from the two countries involved. The fi financing was approved in January. The two-year comprehensive feasibility study will assess the proposed project's technical, economic, environmental, and social viability, as well as alternative financing arrangements, including public-private partnership. 